thought I'd do a, a quick review, kind of overview, more likely, of the Launchpad 7 and a couple of its accessories. The Prog 3 programmer comes in its own separate box and the pad itself and all the leads, charger, etc. come in a significant box which is really quite quite bulky, quite heavy. Um, the TPMS programmer which is referred to as a TS gun I believe that's from, if I remember correctly. Uh, there's no facility in either of these boxes as big as they are to store this inside which is a bit strange from a kickoff but hey we'll get the things out and have a look <coughs> okay so once you've put your code in if you select that option you can then swipe up to uh, reveal all your laptop kind of things plus emails plus you've got battery tester endoscopy oscilloscope etc maps all the usual sort of laptop things as well as um, so we'll get rid of that and we'll double tap that to open it up and you've got your diag options at the top there service function remote online uh, a gimmick personally I think a bit useless uh, ADAS if you can afford the 15 grand for the setup unit TPMS which functions with this uh, TS wand TS gun whatever uh, wirelessly by the way that uh, the lead is just what came with that unit as a charge up because it does need charging um, so on here other modules then in here we've got a few things you have to access these files to do a little change in the in the setup on this uh, but there's a video on the internet to tell you how to do it so uh, more options in here but in the toolbox setting this is where you've got a uh, oscilloscope it is, you can you can read the labels uh, but these come as part of additional units so we can see here that's the programmer the uh, prog3 now the programming side of this tool is vastly sort of overstated by launch um, to a point where I'm sadly disappointed because it's an expensive piece of kit and you've got all the J2534 that they put all the bold letters on the adverts but then when you actually purchase it you find that it will do some VW it will do some Mercedes uh, it won't do your Peugeot's, Citroen's, Ford's you name it really it's really is disappointing the it won't do uh, airbag modules it, 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 the program inside of it is a total waste of time and money um, yeah, uh, I'll leave it at that. So disappointed um, because all the hype made it out to be something special that it's not. So now I'm beginning to wish I'd gone for the Autel 908. But hey, such a life. Look at Dave. In the mall, the shop, the store, um, there are functions available to purchase so you buy this thing 2022 tool and it won't do Tesla you have to purchase Tesla 
for three hundred and sixteen dollars and one cent, presumably that is. I mean, that's for a twelve-month period. Really? So all these extra functions have to purchase and you can select the period of time that you want to purchase for but all these are not included within the tool itself now I did think that Kia I thought really you're not including Kia and Hyundai and Nissan but they are included they're just the Korea versions of, or the Korean versions of, excuse me. So we'll come out of that. So, um, service functions. So just a quick look at some of the service functions on the Pad 7. Excuse my voice, it's um, the winter kind of bug is, seems to be taking hold. Uh, vehicle coverage. Excuse the film wobbling a little bit, I do apologise. So we can do these functions. I'll try and come back a little bit and then hopefully get them all in one side to scroll. So these are just diagnostics for, they're not anything special. It's not, that's not the uh, programming side of the thing. Anyway, so we'll come out of that. Go to the other modules. Toolbox again, Programmer, and once we're into Programmer, it comes up with this screen. You can either click OK or we can look at Vehicle Coverage. Now, this is a little bit kind of um, less than clear, let me say. The actual Vehicle Coverage section of this. Now we can see we're on page one of 6,027 and it starts with 500. You know, is that Fiat 500? Grand Punto? Fiat? 14 T-Jet? It's... The items aren't listed alphabetically under the manufacturer. They seem to be uh, randomly put as like 500 or 206 or so if we go to uh, these boxes are, are greyed out you'd think they're not functional but they actually are so if you select a model and then this screen pops up and we've got 1007 1008 now you think these are Focus, please. You think these are probably 1007, 166? Is that is that Mercedes W166? 206, 207, 208 Peugeot, presumably. Who knows? These uh, these things. If I select one of these, these uh, appear to be chip reference numbers so for things like EEPROM so I'll, I'll select that one so we've now got that and it's selected as you can see and it says IMO, immobilizer so by clicking on this four square thing well, I pressed it twice actually I'll do it again that then changes its uh, appearance and then it comes up with EEPROM read and write. So I did Google one of these numbers and it did come up 
with a, a an EEPROM chip. So that's how I'm now aware that this list of numbers, so select that again, and you can see because I selected that, it's got a tick against it. So now we can scroll down and look. So presumably, again, it's not particularly clear that all these numbers are referenced to different types of chip. So you're obviously into dismantling units to, excuse me a second, to uh, access the chip numbers in order to make any use of this. Now we're on to 3 Series. 3 Series BMW? Is that all of the 3 Series BMWs? 3008? Is that Peugeot? Quite likely. 37308. Why is it not listed under Peugeot alphabetically? Well, so, yeah, 7 Series, BMWs, who knows, 911 Porsche is maybe? Well, sadly disappointed, uh, extremely disappointed. Audi's A1. A3, uh, again it's unclear, it would be logical for it to be Audi's but why wouldn't it be listed under Audi? And then the different vehicle, there's something here that's alphabetically in accord, Acadia, but if I was to type Audi at the top, excuse me while I do that, Audi. The search has brought things up beginning with A, but there's nothing that says Audi, as you can see. Nonsense. Absolute, utter nonsense. Avenger, Harris, Toyota, Harris. There you go, Toyota, there you go. I don't know. I don't know. It's annoying. As a scan tool, it's proving to be a decent scan tool, I have to say. But this sort of element of it, this programming element, is sadly disappointed. Or disappointing. You can use it as a camera, all those kind of useless kind of functions. And you can save your... Uh, results, your scan results, print them, usual thing that you can with most modern scanners. Anyway, this has gone on long enough. Uh, so the X-Prog, the Prog 3, um, that doesn't have a direct charging point. Uh, it's like this has a direct charging port. It's basically powered from uh, a mains power unit like a, well, we'll have a look at it, bear with me. So this thing, Prog 3, uh, no dedicated charging port there. The link out. And basically this thing is daisy chained and powered via this mains unit. Through, through this cable. So it's OBD connection and then the two links into the unit itself. Then there's the add-on bits and all the cables and everything else. Yeah, anyway. So, programming? No. Scan tool? Half decent. So, that's just a quick kind of overview of annoyances um, when I've only just started. <laughs> so where that's going to end up, who knows. But uh, yeah, might end up on eBay yet, going cheap.